Putting Reading First in Maine, Segment 14, Vocabulary Instructional Strategies. Don't panic. If you didn't panic, well, how would you be acting? Brave. You'd be acting brave. Should we put one of those sticky notes in there? Vocabulary is one of the five essential elements of effective reading instruction. Vocabulary refers to the words we must know in order to communicate effectively with others. The importance of vocabulary knowledge has long been recognized in the development of reading skills, particularly reading comprehension. In this segment, you'll see a variety of vocabulary lessons that demonstrate instructional strategies at the first, second, and third grade levels. Vocabulary instruction is also appropriate in preschool and kindergarten. With young children, instruction should focus on building their listening and speaking vocabulary. As children begin to read and write, they draw on this bank of vocabulary. In first through third grades, instruction shifts to develop reading and writing vocabulary. Let me give you an example of segregation. Even though most vocabulary is learned indirectly through experiences with oral language and wide reading, vocabulary should also be taught directly. As with the other four elements of reading, vocabulary instruction should be explicit and systematic. Teachers should use a variety of methods to help students acquire new words and increase their depth of word knowledge. We're going to do something a little different, okay, so you've got to listen. Classroom instruction is particularly important for children who have not had as much exposure to print and oral language use during their preschool years. Research has shown that teachers can effectively teach vocabulary in two ways, through direct instruction of the meanings of specific words and by helping students apply word learning strategies to new words independently. There are several reasons not to directly teach your students all the words in a text that they might not already know. First, in most cases, there is not enough time to devote to this type of instruction. Second, students can understand most texts without knowing the meaning of every word. And finally, they need opportunities to practice word learning strategies. Instead, use the following guidelines to narrow the list of vocabulary words that you plan to teach your students. The first step is to identify the words in the text that your students do not know. Then, identify the important words, the words critical to understanding the text. Next, identify the useful words, the words that students will encounter most often across and outside of text. And finally, identify difficult words, words students may not be able to figure out on their own. Focusing on important, useful, and difficult words, you should realistically plan to teach between 8 and 10 new words per week. As you plan your instruction, keep in mind that children know words at varying degrees. Word knowledge falls into three categories, unknown, acquainted, and established. Unknown words are completely unfamiliar, and the child does not know the meaning. Words that a child is acquainted with are words that are somewhat familiar, and the child has some idea of the basic meaning. Established words are very familiar, and the meaning is immediately recognized. To understand a text fully, it is ideal if a child's word knowledge for that text is established. How might we say that? Children should receive explicit instruction in four types of word learning, which include learning words that are synonyms for known words, learning words that have multiple meanings, learning words that represent new and complex concepts, and clarifying and enriching the meaning of known words. In addition to direct instruction of vocabulary, you can help your students learn unfamiliar words independently by modeling and teaching word learning strategies. These strategies include using dictionaries and other reference aids to learn and deepen knowledge of word meanings. It's called page 23. Everybody look on page 23. Glossary. It's called a glossary. Identifying and using context clues. So we've already decided we know some of our meanings because we know the words, like tadpoles, we knew. But hibernating, Emma said she knew what it meant. And then Carly said, I can find it in the book because I know it's a deep sleep. And now we found another spot. And I'm going to ask someone to read me the meaning of hibernating. Uh, let's see. Jason, why don't you read us hibernating? Hibernating. Being in a state of deep sleep. Inferring word meanings. But can you figure out what the word means on that page? 
What do you think a prey is? Something that would eat you. Something that would eat you? Oh, something that it would eat. Something that it would eat. How did you know that? Because it said his prey was like a lot of different things. And using word part clues like prefixes and root words. Fertilizes. Okay. Fertilizes. Oh, but look, and the second word is fertile. So you have the word fertilizes and you have the word fertile, both on the same page. Do you think they're connected? Yeah. I think they're connected. The other thing that I want to do before we leave today is talk about what are the different ways that you get to know words in a story that you've never read before. This is brand new nonfiction for you. How do you get to know those words? What are the things we did today? No. Um, we wrote them down. Can you talk up a little louder? We wrote them down. We wrote the words down, but did that help us to decide the meaning? No. But how did we find them in the book? There were lots of words in that book. By looking at the end. By looking at what, oh. Myron? Uh, the bolded words. We looked at bolded words. And then what's the other thing we did with prey? What do we have to do there? We had to figure it out with what it wrote down. Yes, and we had to use clues from the page. So we had to figure it out. And that's called inferring. With a swirl and a whoosh. You can help your students learn words indirectly by reading aloud to them. Discuss the selection before, during, and after you read. The class sat spellbound as she finished each story in turn. What is the class set, s set spellbound? What does spellbound mean? New thing. Let me read that sentence over again. The class sat spellbound as she finished each story in turn. Hunter? Quiet. Quiet, yes. Who knows what segregation means? Mm -hmm. That came up in the story of Ruby Bridges as well. Talk with your students about new vocabulary and concepts and help them relate the words to their prior knowledge and experiences. Let me give you an example of segregation. Ruby Bridges in that story, before Ruby went to the France school, she had to go to a different school because she had her skin was darker colored. So there were separate schools. Oh, yeah. There were separate water fountains. That's what segregation means. Separate bathrooms, when they separated things. That's going to be important in this story as well. Okay? So let's read the book and see what happens because many of you have great predictions. Finally, encourage your students to read independently. Keep in mind that outside of direct instruction, two factors contribute to vocabulary growth. First, the frequency of new or unfamiliar words found in what is read, and the volume of words that are read. In order for a child's vocabulary to grow, the child must come in contact with words outside his or her current vocabulary. In the following examples, you'll watch teachers incorporate vocabulary work in their instruction. Vocabulary Instructional Strategies Knowledge Rating Chart In segment 13, you saw how a vocabulary knowledge rating chart can be used to assess students' level of understanding of a set of words. Now watch how the teacher uses the information from this assessment to incorporate instruction on the meanings of this set of words into a read-aloud of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Okay, so boys and girls, as we read this book together, or I read this book to you today, we stopped and talked a little bit about some words that came up that we hadn't heard before or we didn't know the meanings of. And the first word was the word... What? Weather. weather. You know what? Everybody knew what that word weather was. The next word we had on our list was the word gradual. Now some of us knew the word. One person knew what the word meant and could use it in a sentence. There was a word that gradual. Yeah, did you hear that word gradual as well? Well, let's stop and think about that word. It said we're followed by gradual clearing. Gradual clearing. What's a word that we could put? The food go away? It goes away. Build a story. Build a story is an instructional technique which introduces students to vocabulary words taken from a text. All right. You know what we're going to do today? Before we read our new book today, I'm going to show you how we can take some of the words from our new book and we can use some of the words to write a completely different story. Next. 
The Build a Story technique provides students with an additional experience with the words and builds their understanding prior to encountering the words in the text. Being unaware of the specific text from which the words were selected, students use the set of words to create a story. Throne. Angry. Angry. Show me angry. Oh. Oh. Now, if you move your eyes over here, I wrote a story that used all of those words. Do you want to read the story with me? Little, little boy lived in a hut. hut. One day, he went outside. This task can be completed as a shared, interactive, or independent writing experience. There are certain guidelines the students follow when writing the story. So our job is to use all of these words in a brand new story. And remember how we had to use them in the same order that they are in this list. And we can use them more than once. So let's work together to make up a story. And our first word is travel. How are we going to start our story? I was traveling to New York City. No. Does that sound good yeah, for everyone? New York City Stadium. Do we want to do that? I was yeah. traveling to New York City. New York City. I was traveling to New York. City. Okay. The students reread the story after it is written and underline the words as they appear in the story. Here we go. I was traveling to New York City. Instead of reading it through one more time, tell me the words as travel. Travel. What's in the second line? Learn. Travel. Traveled again. Key words and phrases. Mrs. St. Peter has chosen some key words and phrases. And she's taken them out of the story and put them on this chart. So what this example of a vocabulary instructional strategy is an extension of the build a story technique. The teacher has selected key words and phrases from the text to be used in guided reading. Students are first asked to use a few of the key words and phrases in a sentence. The shepherd was amazed at the large stock, dark rock stuck to the surface of the mountain to the terrain. Super job. They then organize the key words and phrases in a sequence, which they use to create their own story. As the students read sections of the text, they pull out the key words and phrases which they have encountered and begin to sequence them in the order in which they appeared in the text. They use this sequenced list as a guide to assist them in retelling the text. The people rescued the herd with sandals. <laughs> Using base words. You know that we've been talking about how words are related to each other, and we've been talking about how one word is related to a bunch of other different words. Another instructional strategy for vocabulary includes teaching students how words are related by focusing on the base words they share. Can anybody think of a word that's related to know, Hannah? Knowledge. Knowledge. This lesson focuses on words connected to the base word know. The teacher has conducted similar lessons using the base words responsible and depend. Examples and non-examples. If anything I say might be an example of someone being fearless, okay, you're going to say the word fearless. But if I give you an example and they're not being fearless, you don't say anything at all. Using examples and non-examples for a specific vocabulary word strengthens students' understanding of a word's meaning. This lesson demonstrates how the teacher focuses on the word fearless during a read-aloud. After talking about this word while reading, students are asked to identify whether a situation can be classified as fearless or not. Losing your parents at a basketball game and asking someone for help. Fearless. Yeah, that's fearless, isn't it? Because you're this teacher's focus on the word fearless continues in a guided reading group where the students locate and mark examples of the word fearless in the book. He's acting brave and fearless. Effective vocabulary instruction includes direct instruction of specific words and word learning strategies, 
as well as reading aloud to your students and encouraging students to read outside school. Find ways for children to enjoy words and be curious about words so they will be eager to learn.